Merry Christmas, strangers. Happy Hanukkah. So glad you could join us on Christmas Eve. We are in Krista's basement. It is Christmas Eve. Snow is falling outside. Bing Crosby is on the piano in the corner. We have a <laughs> coffee. There's a fire on the coffee maker. It's just <laughs> You should probably put that on. Yeah, it's just a perfect <laughs> Christmas Eve here at Krista's house. Yes. Actually, we're only we're just recording this after the last episode. Yeah, it's December fifth. So, yeah, it's December fifth, <laughs> and it's 5th. like forty degrees, and there's yeah, no snow anywhere. But just pretend it's Christmas Eve and yeah. it's snowing. And Especially it's the peaceful. part about Bing Crosby and the coffee pot fire. Yeah, <laughs> that would happen. But we typically just put out a Christmas Eve episode because we know you guys don't like our holiday break. So we want something for you guys to listen to. Mm-hmm. Generally, we do a topic this time. Kurt kind of... It's like Thanksgiving leftovers. We're yeah. just throwing some stuff yeah, together. Yeah, we're, th- we're throwing some stuff together and hope it works. <laughs> yeah. It's like turkey a la king. Yeah. With, it's strange sessions a la king. Yeah, there you go. Strange, ses- strange sessions, turkey, stuffing, mashed potatoes, leftover. Egg rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Egg rolls. Yeah. If you listen to the last you'll episode, get that you'll one. get it. Yeah. Aaron <laughs> makes me that for... He makes his... Post Thanksgiving egg rolls made with all the Thanksgiving leftovers, which that's sounds this, amazing. That's what this episode is. It's a, mm-hmm. a post Thanksgiving egg roll. Yep. So it's being served for Christmas. We hope you're having a wonderful Christmas Eve. Yeah. And we don't really have a topic, mm-hmm. so this is basically going to be the titillating twenty of us just talking. Yeah. But we wanted to touch on a couple things. Uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up is. You know, we had a couple missing 411 stories that we didn't get to in the last episode, so mm-hmm. we're going to do that. Yep. Uh, we don't really have any shout outs because we just recorded the <laughs> other <laughs> like episode. Like five minutes ago. <laughs> we haven't had any new strangers in the last five minutes. I no, we think, haven't. But... So they're slacking a little yep. bit. We have some gifts to open. We do. Uh, so Some taste tests. Yeah. And I don't know. I think that's it. What do we want to do first? I would like you to open your present. You didn't have to get me something. Of course I didn't, but that's what makes it fun. <laughs> I didn't get you anything. So that's, you're here. That's my present. So <laughs> every year I make candy, right? Yes. And it just feels weird to make candy during a pandemic. <laughs> so I got you a gift instead and it's under the tree behind you. Oh, he didn't have to get me I anything. I know, but I saw this and it was literally screaming at me from the shelf saying, this is for Kurt. Yes. Kurt needs to have this. Yes. Oh, it's big. It's, it just, you'll, you'll get it. Oh, <laughs> thank you. It's a flannel Christmas tree. It is a tree. flannel Christmas tree. This is so Isn't that adorable? Cute. I figure you probably don't have a tree and it's just a little You know that I don't have something. a tree. I don't put anything up in my apartment. And it looks like I made it out of one of your shirts, which I didn't. This, but the weird thing is... Is this your podcasting underwear pattern? That is exactly my <laughs> podcasting underwear pattern. So it looks like How I have did a... I know that? It, I don't know. I'm going to have to check my apartment for cameras yeah. when I get home. This Maybe looks, my bathroom has a camera. This looks like my podcasting underwear turned into a Christmas tree. Well, there this you go. This is so cute. Thank you, thank you so giving. much. You're welcome. I don't put up anything in my apartment. And it's it's been because we always... You know, when I was with Natalie, we had so many cats, and oh, I always have sure. cats. Yeah. And I just don't, and I'm lazy. They like to I'm, snipe I'm lazy. Stuff. I don't want to go through the hassle of putting up a tree. Well, there you go. There's no Thank tree you to put so up. Much. Just set it on your this table. This is awesome. You're welcome. I gotta take a picture of this, but I can't post it today. I'm gonna wait till Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Although well, yep. today is Christmas Eve. Yep. <laughs> so. <laughs> This is awesome. Thank you so much. And also just a happy season, holiday season, happy solstice. Ha- like I said, happy Hanukkah. We don't know what you all celebrate, but w- whatever you celebrate, we hope that you're able to do it with people, yes, the people exactly. that you love and and that it's a good holiday season for you. So we also have a gift from Sherry. Yes. And we still have a package from David Lamarco okay. that we need to open. So we're going to open Sherry's present first. Here she, it's a card. Here's a card. So Sherry is my coworker and a listener, and she's also the person, she and her daughter-in-law are handcrafting the mugs that uh, y'all are buying. So awesome. So, Thank you so much, Sherry. Yeah. She's been a big part of the podcast. And whatever this is, I believe she made this for us. So. That's awesome. It says, wishing you a song in your heart and a friend by your side. Aww. Oh. 
Kurt and Krista, thanks for doing such a great job on the podcast. Even though we have all had a difficult year, you two seem to pull it all together. Thanks for being strange. Stay safe. Sherry Myers. Aww. Thank you so much, Sherry. That's very sweet. Here, I do mean, you want to open it? Honestly, with the pandemic and all the garbage from this year. Yeah. No, you open it. Are you sure? Yes. With all the garbage from this year, like our podcast still being the same is kind of like yeah. a... Yeah, uh, it's, it's a, a constant for It's people. a constant and it's it's a comfort thing. It is. This is so pretty. I don't want to like ruin it. <laughs> no, that's how I felt with Lauren's like, oh, She's such a crafty the... person. And of course, our package is beautiful. Oh, this is so pretty. Wow. I'm going to be covered in glitter. It's just like me when I leave the strip joints. I knew that was coming. <laughs> I just knew that was coming. I don't like those places. You know that. I've been in them a handful of times for like bachelor parties and stuff. And if you want to see me awkward, see me at a strip <laughs> joint. That is not my cup of tea. I'm just going to do it child style. <laughs> That's the best. That is the best way to do Rip it. Rip it open. <laughs> Opening the box. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at this. <laughs> it's so cute. Oh, my gosh. This is awesome. Oh. They're masks. They are masks. But they say the strange sessions yes, on them. Yes, we, we have our oh, own COVID masks that say the strange sessions. That is amazing. This is awesome. So she makes, so you own several yeah. of the masks yeah. that she makes. Um, I love this. Well, Sherry. Oh this my gosh. This is awesome. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that we now have like free advertising for the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. That's so cool. So I love cute. this. I do too. It's going to catch on. Cute. It's going to catch on, too. Oh, yeah. Maybe she'll end up... Maybe, maybe people will want these. They'll be a heck of a lot cheaper to ship than the mugs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you so much, yes, Sherry. Yes, thank you, Sherry. That is awesome. Handcrafted mask by Sherry Myers. Schmeyers, as I call her. Schmeyers. Yep. What are you looking for there? The other, the other package from David Lamarco. It's under your Christmas tree. Oh, my flannel Christmas tree. <laughs> I love this. That is going right up when I get home. All right, do you, do you want me to open this one since it's over here? Yep. Make Kurt open a package for we'll once. Break with tradition. It's already like half, bro yeah, it's just going to pop right open, of course. That's a heavy box, so I don't know what he's got in there. Oh, he sent, okay, I know. This is, this is what, I'm excited to try this. Because I have never had this, and for some reason, I have like this weird fascination with soda and soda histories okay like i know a surprise is it like a whole six pack or something a whole 12 pack oh dang and i'm guessing i'm gonna probably take it because i don't probably know if you're gonna like i'm it. not a soda person but i wanted to try this for years maybe leave one for jim he yeah. does like well soda. yeah okay. i wanted to try this for years this is like a big soda in the i'm ready in like the i want to say new england okay it's not clam flavored <laughs> nope it is moxie oh yeah moxie moxie I've never heard of this. So, hang on. Okay. Read you a little bit about Moxie. Can you take a picture of it too then? Yeah. Moxie. Doesn't Moxie also mean like having Leia, like, like gumption like or gumption whatever? Gumption or yeah, spunk. Okay. <laughs> like having She's got spunk. Moxie. All right. I'm going to read you this article. Okay. I'm ready. This article is from today and it's called, What is Moxie? Why Coke's new soft drink is already polarizing soda fans. It says, it's not often that a small regional drink gets national attention, but when you're snapped up by one of the world's largest beverage companies, soda fans listen. Hmm. Thanks to Coca-Cola, Moxie, the official soft drink of Maine, yes, that's a real thing, may be headed for the big leagues after the soda giant announced that it acquired this bitter cola with a cult following in New England. Bitter? According to its website, this funky flavored bubbly beverage was invented and patented as Moxie Nerve Food back in 1885. As a what? Year, Say that again? Moxie Nerve Food. Okay. Before, in 1885, a year before Coca-Cola was launched in 1886, it was actually the first bottled carbonated drink in the U.S., hmm. so it's no surprise that it was snapped up by Coke. Okay. And people are like up in arms about this because this is like a main tradition or like a new England tradition. Okay. And now that it's going to be like nationwide, mm. people are really upset about okay. it. But plenty of people not from the great state of Maine want to know what does Moxie taste like? Twitter, of course, has a few answers. 
Tweeters called Moxie, quote, an acquired taste, which according to Moxie's website is something that it prides itself on. One person said it's like black licorice flavored medicine water. Oh, no. <laughs> Another said the taste is similar to root beer, but chalkier. Not necessarily bad, but definitely unique. Chalky root beer. Despite Moxie's peculiar flavor profile, its fans are nervous that the big soda giant will change the flavor profile. Mm. So, What's the point then? Of what? Why change it? Because that's Coke easily yeah. could because people aren't going to like people like aren't going to like it because it's it. A, it is an acquired it's like White Castle hamburger like people mm-hmm. either love them or hate them and it's kind of an acquired taste. Is and it going to be like mineral water? Or no, like... it's going to be like licorice flavored root beer, but kind not of. sweet. Yeah, it's sweet. Hmm. But this is like a huge thing. Like I have, I'm excited about this. Thank you, David, because I have always wanted to try that's Moxie. So cool. I have never tried it. All right, so, we'll pop that bad boy open. Oh, I wish that sticker weren't on that guy's face. That, that'd be a great oh, picture. Yeah, be a great picture. Maybe there's another... Si- oh, well, the can has it. Oh, I gotta take a picture of that. I'm assuming you're gonna want to sip and then I'll finish the can because I don't think I'll you're do, gonna yeah, like I'm it. I'm just gonna pour it in my okay. mug. Oh, I'm excited. I am seriously, this is another good Christmas gift. I have always wanted to try Moxie. Like I said, I have like this weird fashion. Like I could do an episode about like the history of Coca-Cola and the history mm. of Pepsi and and the wars that they've had and stuff. Like I'm sure. fascinated by soda. Okay. Or pop, as some people call it. Up north they call it pop. It's soda. It's not pop. Right. I grew up calling it pop, but I call it soda. Now. Ooh, I'm excited to try it. <laughs> Let all the carbonation get out of there. Wow, it's very carbonated. Ooh, <laughs> it smells like it smells, it smells like, like root beer. It smells like root beer with licorice, like black. It smells like Pepsi or Coke to me, actually. But okay, you ready? ready? I'm ready. Okay. Okay, I like that. I yeah, I don't. It's actually milder in flavor than like Pepsi or I Coke. Like, I really like this. I don't think it tastes like root beer though. I I, I taste maybe no, just a tiny no, bit. No, I taste like Coke. Mixed with like a licorice, black licorice flavored mixed drink, maybe? I don't pick up on the licorice at all. I mean, for soda, I think it's good. I really like this. And I'm not, a you know me, I'm not a soda person. It is person. not as overwhelming. Right. It has a really mild flavor. It's yeah. not bitter. Yeah. I, I think like it's it. good. I'm going to give this a... I'm going to be so jacked up between all the Mary Janes I ate. <laughs> Was the all coffee ha- I'm Krista drinking. Krista was all hopped up on the Mary Jane. <laughs> between, the candy. Between the, candy. the episodes. <laughs> yes. I, I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. I really like this. I, mean, I could see me drinking this over Coke or Pepsi. Like I good li- in a float. Yeah. Like, I really like this. Yeah, I think it's good, too. I mean, I, I'm not a soda person. I'd give it an 8, though. Yeah. It, it tastes hmm. like Coke mixed with black licorice flavoring. Hmm. But That's really good. subtle black licorice. It's not... I expected it to be way more overwhelming. Mm-hmm. I just smacked my microphone really hard, so sorry if that came across. No, I think it's surprisingly good. The way you were describing it, I was a little worried that it was going to be gross. people on Twitter were saying that it's like gross, but it's not. There's nothing overwhelming about the flavor in any way. Oh, so I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Moxie. Yeah, I think it's good. Awesome. I Thank think Jim would like that too because yeah. he likes um, root beer, Dr Pepper, stuff like but that. I also so. don't want all twelve of them. So you guys save half, and oh, I'll take half. Sure. I yeah. mean, he'd be happy. I like this. Cool. Yeah, between the candy, the the moxie, and the coffee we're drinking. Yeah, I think we've gone gotten through all the taste tests now, except for that. some of Melissa's that we're going to save a little bit. But I like this. Wow. Yeah. I did not expect this. Are I we, thought it was going to be funky tasting. No, it was really good. Yeah. Even I think it's good. Do you want to do a tarot? Yeah, let's do okay. one for. We already asked about season five in the last episode, so. <clears throat> did we ask how next year is going to be for us? Yeah, what does twenty what does twenty twenty one hold just in general? Yeah, please be good because. Do you have a New Year's resolution? It's getting a little cluttered. I'm over I'm here. just bad with resolutions. I never keep. I don't them. make them. No. I mean, I, I need, feel like I'm on a really healthy path. I need to eat better anyway. because my what I was going to complain about that I talked about in the last episode is my sleep. Oh. Like my acid reflux is so off the charts bad, and I don't know what's wrong. Food. But the other night, I. Went to bed. I think about I shut off my light at like quarter to nine. I think I was actually reading Missing 411. And I shut off my light at quarter after nine. Woke up to go to the bathroom at 1230. Never got back to oh, sleep. Oh, that's the worst. Never got back to sleep. But I told Miranda when I was by her house the next day, I said, 
the night after the same thing happened 12 30 i was up but what i did this time is i turned on my light and i read for a little bit mm-hmm. and then i fell asleep easier so there's something off with my sleep it's been so bad so i, I, really I need to eat better because wood. i know eat, eating better has is tied Absolutely. in with my sleep well especially acid reflux <clears throat> is that the four of wands two two of wands Oh, no, four. <laughs> like, did I hallucinate an extra? Stick. Oh, here we are. Oh, completion and celebration. Good, because 2020 was hot garbage. <laughs> You've done it. The Four of Wands is a card of completion. Your labors have been steady and strong, and the harvest will be plentiful. In other words, it's time to party. <laughs> I feel like we just got this card recently. There might be an upcoming event to mark this occasion, a graduation, wedding, or celebration of some kind. So enjoy yourself and those you love. This is an exciting and prosperous time. Nice. I feel like the last two cards have been very much yeah. like that. Harvest hmm. is sketchy, though, because there's so many people that think that this, all this COVID stuff, all this election stuff is like the start of the new world order oh, doing boy. their great calling where they're going to like kill off half the population oh, to... God. Yeah, if you okay. if you ever want to do a deep dive on oh, conspiracy theory, there's I'm reading a lot of stuff that people think December 21st is going to be some huge solar right. flare or something that's going to completely. Didn't we talk about that? Yeah, but that was like a theory thing. But I'm seeing a lot of stuff in on mm. like conspiracy boards and stuff that people think something is going to happen December 21st. So you guys might not even get a chance to hear this episode. Oh jeez. <laughs> so the I episode think you probably that didn't will. exist. I think you probably will though. Hmm. Well, I hope that's not true. But good. It's good to know 2021 will be better than this Prosperous mess. Prosperous and yeah, I agree. But this yeah, let's look back at this year. In year our, in review. Our year in review for our podcast. We're just going to touch on the episodes we did and... Kind of our favorite moments from the season. Do you remember what our first episode was for season four? Like it blows my mind. I did not think that was it. No. It just seemed, it was strange phone calls. It seems oh, like we really? did that two years ago. Yeah, that seems like a really long time ago. But no, that was season four, episode one, strange phone calls. It wow. seems like so long ago, but mm. that was back when we had hope for this year. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right before we knew what this year would, yeah. would hold. Yep. Uh, episode two was a My Favorite Mini Mystery, The Karnak Family Murders. Oh, yeah. And Number Stations. Like everybody wanted, I love Number Stations. Mm-hmm. I do. A in the Karnak story, I had um, personal slight connection. personal connection yeah. too. So uh, number stations, uh, not really mysterious, right? It's but spy, cool. But it's cool. It's one of those things that are just kind of creepy, even though we know what they are. Mm-hmm. Season four, episode three, one of my favorite topics: subliminal messages. Mm-hmm. That was the one where the students in the room next to us were so loud. loud. Oh. Yeah. Oh, the school. Yeah. That so, seems like a distant memory, it too, does all of too. a sudden. Like, I'm, I'm so glad we don't have to deal with other people. Like, when the Navy cadets came in and yes. took it over. And... That was really the hardest part for me, but was because they yeah, were just... you were... You did not like... You were, like, always... gave me some anxiety You were always that. super anxious when we yeah. pulled up there. Like, if we saw other cars. Mm-hmm. And it was just because, I think, of that one time where they were, like, so weird, where they wanted to see our ID. Yeah. I'm not used to people asking for my ID when we go to no, record the podcast. We're not, yeah, we're Russian spies spying right. on some junior high school. They were just Navy playing cadets. a role, but at the oh, same I know. time, I, I didn't, know. It, you know. But I still. That's not going to happen in our basement unless Jim comes s- down here and asks for identification. Yeah, it'd be weird if he did. <laughs> it would be a little weird. Uh, I love subliminal messages. That is one thing I'm always going to be super out, fascinated actually. with. Oh, me too. Uh, I actually told Krista while we weren't recording. I went on my computer for something and I have a whole bunch of PDFs of Playboys. And it's not even for what you would think it is. They're all like from 1972, 73, 74, because I love like old ads and like Mm -hmm. looking for like subliminal messages. And there's something about that that I'm like fascinated with. Like Mm. old, I'm literally a guy that'll buy an old issue of Playboy, not even for the articles, for the advertisements. That's funny. You know, such a Kurt thing. It is such a Kurt thing. (laughs) Episode four was Strange States, Alabama. Like, ah. I love our Strange States I episodes. I think a lot of our listeners do, too. I think so, too. You know, and that was one of those things that just kind of happened, that we weren't even going to do it. But then, uh, well, um, who was it that won the contest? And he wanted us to talk about cryptids in Ohio. Mm, yeah. And he gave us a bunch of information yeah. about Yeah, so that's it. kind of how that started. It's like, you know, maybe we should do this for every state. And that's kind of turned into one of our more popular episodes. So how many of those are we going to do per season? Uh, I think we did two this season. Yeah. 
may, but it's nice to know that we have those as backups mm-hmm. if we do start running out of topics, which yeah. is a fear of mine that it you is. say that I'm dumb for. And I feel like you have pages <laughs> of like uh, episode ideas. I do. So. I do. But the more we do the big ones, I have a feeling we're going to start veering more towards mini mysteries because I feel like mm-hmm. a lot of the ones that we have That's aren't okay, really though. enough. Yeah, well, yeah. People love the mini mystery episodes mm-hmm. too. So that was Alabama Strange States. Um, whoop! <laughs> Clicked on YouTube. <laughs> this one was I really like this one. This was episode five, and this one was Stranger Suggestions. This was Matthew Thornton, uh, the Tate House and Blank Room Soup. This was mm. the one that people. Yeah. This was the, the Matthew Thornton was these weird letters that people were getting all across the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Tate House was the one where those that older couple was recording sounds of like machinery and and in crying, the or like through the basement, like the the, underneath their house. Yeah. And the blank room soup was that weird YouTube video of the guy eating soup and those people wearing costumes coming in and like comforting him while he yeah. was crying. So these was, these little weird ones are some of my favorite yeah, episodes. Yeah. Like I we need to do an episode on like creepy pastas, like our favorite mm. creepy pastas mm-hmm. that aren't real. Like the, uh, the dancing man. And I come up with that a lot in the missing 411 that there was somebody that was named search and rescue and they posted this thing about all their strange experiences. And it turns out that it was, he later said it was all faked. It was like for the no sleep subreddit, mm. which is creepy stories you make up. Yeah. And that's kind of where this thing started with the guy said, you know, he ended it saying the one thing I will tell you is, scattered throughout national parks or just woods in the United States, you're going to come across a stairway that's just there. Yeah. yeah. And he said, whatever you do, do not go up this stairway. And it turned, and a lot of people think that's a real thing. And it's not, this guy was making a story. It was like a creepy pasta. But people are posting pictures of stuff like that Well, yeah, you're going to see stairways, but a lot of people are like Photoshopping them. Oh. So the stairway in the woods thing is not a legitimate. What's all these monoliths showing up everywhere? Oh, I don't know. I think they're <laughs> so I think that's bizarre. Cool. Did you see some of the funny ones? A Bigfoot carrying it well, out there? Well, there's Bigfoot oh. one. There's the one that says uh, the McRib is back and it shows the monolith with like a drive through <laughs> speaker on it and like the <laughs> price thing. And that's great. Yeah, there, there's that one. Do you get into the McRib? I've never uh, had it, so I don't okay. even know. No, I mean, yeah. I'm not going to. gaga over it's, that it's, thing, It's though. like Quick Trip has a really, like a just mm-hmm. as good uh, yeah. pork rib sandwich. It's and always even, there, probably. It's just like a, a questionable meat. Sure, mystery meat. <laughs> you know, it is. But so are the Chicken McNuggets, technically. It's <laughs> right. that pink slime or whatever that they make in the chicken. <laughs> uh, but I've had them, and it's not something... Like, if I had my choice between that and a filet of fish, I'll take the filet of fish every time. Give me back the oh, fish. I love filet of fishes. I just yeah, love they are, them. Yeah, they are. I mean, I haven't had one in probably a decade, but I remember them being. Oh, very when they're good. two for five bucks, I'm there almost You're all over every it? day. Yeah, really? I'm there almost every day. This could explain your uh, <laughs> acid, <laughs> reflux. <laughs> your acid reflux. Yeah. Or my portliness. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, episode six. Episode six. <laughs> this was when the poop must have been starting to hit the fan. It is just called Current State of Affairs. Oh. That is where we went I on I think there. it was a Skype. Yeah, that's when okay. we started realizing we had to do Skype yep. because... We didn't know if we could go to the school or what yeah, we were supposed Yeah, we didn't. To do. We didn't. And again, thank you, Brian Young, for sending me that awesome microphone. Like... <laughs> Skype, we might end up doing that if, if we have to record and it's like a snowstorm. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I've told you guys, my car, you know, it's there's something, the there, yeah, there's something, the, the wheel alignment, it shakes. And like I said, that thing slides on fog. So mm-hmm. when there's snow, I don't want to be driving down here. So we might have to do more Skype ones, mm-hmm. you That's know. cool. At least we got the hang of it now. Yeah, exactly. So that was current state of affairs. And I'm guessing that state was not good. <laughs> Right. But, and it's still not really much better. No, things haven't changed a whole lot. Uh, season four, episode seven. This was a Skype one, but this is one of those cases that I'm fascinated with, and that's Tara Calico. Mm, yeah. With the picture with the yes. with the, 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 the boy and the girl in the back of the van. Tied duct up. Duct taped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was, uh, that's that's one episode that that topic always sticks with me. Yeah. The missing persons one's always You know, that's me. the thing. Now with uh, working with my students and stuff that are in sixth grade like it hits me even harder like if something ever happened to them Mm -hmm. i would be distraught you know so i just it's just like a horrible horrible case you know i'm i'm i hate to say it but i'm hoping that she was killed and not not 
done part duct, of a duct sex, tape. It's part of a sex, you know, like, a trafficking. Right, thing. sex trafficking. That's what I was trying to say. But it's just horrible. Mm-hmm. But that is one of those cases that just sticks with me. Season four, episode eight, USOs and Shag Harbor. Like, mm-hmm. I love underwater UFOs. I think mm-hmm. underwater UFOs are cool. The Shag Harbor thing was really interesting. I don't really know what else to say about that one. <laughs> that was just one of those ones. It is what it is. Uh, fascinated with that. One of my, because I run a geocaching club with some of my students. And one of my, it's always send me a picture of something. You know, one day it was send me a picture of something orange. One, and I always do like a research question. Okay. And one of the research questions uh, said, it was a two-parter. It said, where, everybody knows Mantuak has a car ferry. Where is the other side where the car ferry goes? And that's mm. Ludington, Michigan. Mm-hmm. And then the next question was, so where the car ferry ends, if you take that city, Manitowoc, and Benton Harbor, Michigan, what are those the endpoints of? Ah, there you so go. They all, that's an episode. They were all super fascinated that mm. we have a Lake Michigan Triangle. They yeah. didn't know that. You know, so I was in class yesterday, actually, and one of the teachers asked me how it was going, and I said, the kids are, like, learning lots of stuff. And Lillian, one of my favorite students, wrote in chat. She said, yeah, I learned we have, like, a Bermuda Triangle of our own here. So it was just really cool that they they liked that. Uh, episode 9, another one of my favorite episodes, and that one I will always remember because that wasn't going to be the topic, but I stumbled across it, and I was so utterly fascinated with it that I wanted to do that one, and that is David Glenn Lewis. The guy that went missing in Texas the day of the Super Bowl oh. and ended up in Washington. He had like fresh sandwiches made yeah, and stuff. Yeah, sandwiches in the refrigerator. Mm-hmm. We just talked about him in the last episode. Yeah, that okay. the game was still, it was being taped. Mm-hmm. And he disappeared and ended up in Washington, found dead, wearing clothes that he wouldn't usually wear. Near a military base. Yeah, a lot of people really liked that episode. Mm-hmm. And that's just a really fascinating episode. That is one of my it favorites is. from this last season. It's a head scratcher. Episode 10, Haunted Paintings. Like, I still love too. Haunted Paint. I love yeah. it. Fascinated by that. Uh, don't know if I buy it. But if I come across any, we got a lot of wall space down here. <laughs> we in the... do. <laughs> <laughs> would you be opposed to having a haunted? Yeah, because it's I your would. house. I would. It's my house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had to think about it. I had a one. I was like, I, as soon as I said it, I'm like, yeah, she's not going to want a haunted no, painting. No, no, no. We were at my parents' house yesterday helping put some Christmas stuff up. And there's my mom's like childhood Ouija board is in my old <laughs> bedroom. Right. Nice. And Jim was leaning down to plug something in. And I'm like, yeah, just shove that Ouija board out of the way. He's like, should we bring this home? And I said, that thing is not coming anywhere near my house. <laughs> right down you here on the table. Stay here. Yeah. It's actually pretty cool looking, but I'm I don't sure want because it. it's an older one. Yeah. yeah. Episode 11. Crazy, crazy topic. The Montauk project. Mm-hmm. That was the really weird one with the Montauk chair where yep. it would like experiments yeah experiments and, and they brought some creature in and it, it's, it's what stranger things was based on the yeah. tv show stranger things such a good show was based on the montauk project have you which watched it i i haven't watched the last season okay episode 12 uh this was i really liked your topic this was the my favorite mini mystery the doomsday cult mm-hmm. in the walmart parking lot yeah and spontaneous human combustion yeah that was a pretty solid episode. There was a, I ran across a documentary on something, Travel Channel probably, because they do all the weird stuff now. Um, and it was about spontaneous human combustion. Really? It was really interesting. It is. I it's mean, such it's a creepy a, topic. It's a creepy topic. Uh, and it's yeah. just one of those things that you don't like to think about too much because mm-hmm. it could happen to you at any totally. time. Totally. Like a oh, burst into flames Episode right now. 13, one of my favorites and one that became kind of... You know, we have our trademarks. Pickle stuff ended up being one of our trademarks. <laughs> Bigfoot stuff. Bigfoot stuff. Mm-hmm. But this also became one of our trademarks, and it still pops up almost every day in The Strangers. What do you think that is? This episode topic. This I was, don't know. It, it shows up all the time. People are always talking about it. Chris Kramer. No, that was last no, season. No. Hmm. Think like something that people always talk about. Think Hellier. Oh, synchronicities. synchronicities. Yeah, yep. okay. A lot of people still talk about the 1111s. A lot mm-hmm. of people talk about the synchronicities. Yeah, they do post synchronicities yeah. every single day. And it's weird. I mean, it's one of those things that I'm fascinated with. And once they start. Once they start, yeah. Mm-hmm. But for me, they start and then they go, on waves they go crazy me. and then they stop. Yep. I'm not having anything. No, lately. I have not had anything lately. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think the ones I was having was pertaining to me getting my job. Yeah, oh, I sure. really do. Yeah. Like That was something telling me that something big was coming. I've still never seen 1111. <laughs> Oh God! I Never. See, I still see it all the time so when I turn crazy. on my phone. I just happen to turn on my phone at eleven mm-hmm. eleven. 
Episode 14, another topic I love, not really a paranormal one, but still just a fascinating one nonetheless, and that is the 1980s satanic panic. Mm, yeah. Especially the stuff with the McMartin preschool. Yeah. Like the whole crazy situation where the, the kids there said they had secret tunnels under the toilets and, mm-hmm. and, and killed a kitten and were doing like blood magic and stuff. So that was just a fast... And Dungeons and Dragons, mm-hmm. bad. Don't do Dungeons D&D. and Dragons. Do not do Dungeons and Dragons. That's so bad. But that's one of those episodes <laughs> that I'm just fascinated because I lived through that. And one of our our yearly episodes that we do every year that people love and that we love, listener stories. Oh, yeah. That's probably yep. one of my absolute Episode favorites. 15 was listener stories number four. People really come through on that Oh, they stuff. do. And Sending they, they, us they, MP3s. They, yeah, and... they give us just amazing stories, too. There's yeah. Bigfoot stuff. There's synchronicity stuff. Mm-hmm. There's ghost stuff. Like... You know, we say it all the time, but you guys are amazing. You guys deliver. That is 100% for sure. Episode four, or season four, episode 16, Loch Ness Monster. Uh, The Loch Ness. One of those ones that I just think is Eh. blah. It's a fun, it's a fun legend. It is a fun legend. Like, I love the idea that there's this Mm -hmm. serpenty dinosaur thing that swims around the loch. I can't completely rule it out, but I don't put a lot of stock in it actually existing. I don't either. But we had to do it at some point. Mm-hmm. Episode 17, Strange States, Idaho. Idaho. A lot of people. Love Recorded it. at the day that my uncle was home from yeah. Idaho visiting. Yeah. I still want to visit that picnic table. That's mm-hmm. out, like the most Poor remote picnic table. picnic table. <laughs> so that was episode 17. And apparently a place where a lot of missing 411 stuff happened. Yeah, we found out that in the last episode. A lot of missing 411 stuff in Idaho. Episode 18. Sorry, guys. You're going to probably hear it again because I have to look up the full name. <laughs> Oh, this was a good one. This one, we had a special person sit in this season. Yeah. This was my favorite mini mystery, The Tall Men's Haunting and Mel's Hole. Yeah, Mel's Hole. That was a great... Corey went deep into Mel's Hole. He did such a good... He did such a good (laughs) job. see what you did there. He did such a good job on that. Yeah, he did. He always does a great job, He does. He does. Uh, The Tall Men's Haunting was... Was that... The bed. The bunk beds. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's like a big... Which is a Wisconsin story. Yeah, Horicon. Yep. So yeah, that was just a standout episode. Corey yeah. just knocked Mel's hole right out of the park. So good. <laughs> uh, oh, season four, episode 19, the cursed episode, the one that I just could not get started because stuff kept happening. Remember, I lost my job. Oh. I was starting my new job. Yep. That's why Corey sat in on that one because I was good, I was so stressed about starting my new job that I couldn't like focus on right. stuff. So episode 19 was Sky Sounds. Yeah. That was the one that I just could not get going because stuff. Jim was would... on that episode, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. yep. Jim's he, first guest He did guest such appearance. a good job too. Yep. Like everybody at first, they're like a little nervous. And then once mm-hmm. they start going, they're like, Psh, they're comfortable. we got this. Yep. We'll rope them into a season five episode. Oh yeah, definitely. Season four, episode 20, not paranormal, but scary nonetheless. Electronic surveillance. Yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy. It is. It, yeah. I don't. Is I it, still didn't plug in my Google Mini. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I sent this to anybody else, but I sent it to Shauna, uh, our Canadian stranger, mm-hmm. that it was like right after this episode came out and we talked about how Facebook knows what you're interested in. So totally. Taylor's ads, mm-hmm. I got a Wish ad and the first thing in the Wish ad was a sweatshirt that advertised Pornhub. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, <laughs> there might be something to this. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. Yeah, I keep getting car ads, and I just bought a car, so... Yeah, so it's just so... It's creepy. Yeah. I mean, it really is creepy. Episode 21, Halloween. 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 That's when we learned... Everybody learned about Cabbage Night. Yeah. Smashing Cabbage. Smashing Cabbage. Not to be confused with Smashing, smashing Pumpkins. pumpkins. <laughs> uh, episode 22, our... One of our... Was a Halloween down here? Or was Halloween still at the school? I can't. Halloween I was, was going to ask you that. Where where did we record the first episode down here? I think Halloween was. was Halloween? Yes, because my house was all decked out for yes. Halloween, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So Halloween was our first. No, electro- electric electronic surveillance was down here. Was it? Yes. Are you sure? I think so. I don't remember. Where's our intern? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I it was either electronic either. surveillance or Halloween. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to it. Actually, I can I tell by know. the photos. We'll we can yeah. look at the photos. Um, episode 22 was down here because that wasn't that long ago, and that is remote viewing. Mm-hmm. Weird topic, fascinating yeah, topic. That was definitely down here. Yeah, 
Yeah, because we kept saying, what if somebody was remote viewing down here? Right, or you know, one of us could be, lay on the couch and try it. Yeah, would that be a ghost? Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. And like that our episode 23, Deja Vu and Toy and Bee mm-hmm. Tiles. That was our last episode prior, prior to the, to one the last we one. And episode yep. 24 was, of course, Missing 411. Yep. Went better than I thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was also a hodgepodge of stuff, but I think it... it turned out really good yeah it was like one of those casseroles where you throw a bunch of stuff in but it turns out okay or a midwestern hot dish a midwestern hot <laughs> dish i've never heard it called a hot dish Tater ever. tot casserole really oh i've heard hot dish mm. it's the same thing to me a hot dish and a casserole are the same thing so that was this season yeah good stuff what are your favorite moments from the season i think for me one is moving here yeah because definitely. it's just made such a difference yeah. i think i mean i wasn't hesitant but you, you don't I, like change. I don't like change, but I also a lot of it to me depends on the vibe. Like yeah. the school had a good vibe for us to record it there. It did. And part Until of me was worried if we would lose the space. vibe coming somewhere else. Mm, but we totally that. didn't. No, no, I love it down here. This feels yeah. like this is our space. This is our space now. This feels like home now. Mm-hmm. You know, I, all I miss the Christmas. spookiness of the school. But yeah, we, we were recording in the morning, so yeah. We didn't really experience that a whole lot anymore. We did that no. one day. We had a day where we were yeah. both like really freaked out. Yeah, like one of the last episodes we recorded there was yeah. a weird day, weird sounds, weird vibe. My friend Brooke that listens to the podcast a lot. I might go there with her one day to show her where we recorded because she's really enjoying. Actually, it. the Halloween episode we recorded at the school because we wore costumes. Oh, that's right. <laughs> we took a video in the that's gym. Right. My my. Your cape. My cape. And my horns. Yes. <laughs> I love that video too. Yeah, that's it's like a one fun of my video. favorite videos. Um other my favorite moments were uh Corey and Jim both being yeah. on the on the Yeah. The, you know, like Corey knocks it out of the park when he's here. I mean that's everybody knows. He does. That. He and does such a good I job. loved Jim's first time yeah. coming on it. Yeah. Because it was one of those things where, like I said, you're nervous at first and then it was like it was like natural. Well, and I think I must mention him at least once in every yeah. episode. So now so, people got to hear him. Yeah, exactly. So he's upstairs right now. So we're going to start corralling him down here to <laughs> yeah. be like, what do you think of this topic? What do you think of this? Yeah. You know? It'd be fun to pick a topic next season that he is kind of interested yeah. in. So. Yeah. Find out. Okay. Pick his brain. A little pillow talk. Find yeah. out Find out what <laughs> okay. paranormal topics he's interested in. Mm, pillow talk. That's a Doris Day movie. Just saying. Uh, okay. Never seen it. Um, I love what other Day. what other great <laughs> moments did we have? I mean, everything getting from the, the mugs going everything was for, yes, and everything really from the strangers. Momentous. I mean, every oh, yeah. every gift, every postcard, every sweet thing that you guys posted on Facebook or sent us in a mm-hmm. message is always the highlight. All the gifts are just yeah, like they just you know, blow Chris my mind. and I are still the Bigfoot that I still need to repair. He's safely in his little box over there. Yes, but he is down here in the studio. Yeah. So it's just, Chris and I are just floored that that you guys care. We just marvel every time we get together, every day. Kurt yeah. will send me a a, <laughs> a screenshot of something someone said that we're both just like, oh my God, these yeah. people are <laughs> so like, sweet. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. We're so lucky. You know, we say it all the time. We love you guys and we yeah. truly do. Uh, it's just like, you know, Chris and I were talking between these two episodes that, you know, if we could go back to when we started this and f- saw what it was going to turn into, we would be like shocked. I'd be, be like, like no yeah, way. no way. Because, you know, not. like, it's not us, like, being humble. We literally thought nobody was going to listen except totally. a couple of our friends. Out you of know, obligation. Jeff and Joe. Yeah. Uh, they don't even listen. <laughs> maybe Corey and, and, and Melissa and Stephanie, like, like my friends like that, that I've been friends with forever that right. I know are kind of into this stuff. Like, yeah. they would listen. Like, Brittany and Devin. Yeah. And, but we'll just yeah. never forget when people started filtering in that we didn't know. We're like, hey, I don't know this person. Do I'm you like, know this no? person? How did this, how did they find us? Well, and I love, that's another thing you know, I love about us is that a lot of this is just word of mouth. Yeah. People stumble but upon I love, our podcast. I don't, I don't remember if it was Dash, but I know I think Dash was one that kind of didn't care for it at first because yes. of our talking. Yep. And then he came back and, and was like, "Never that, mind." We get that a lot. That yeah. Some of the newer list. Some of the newer strangers said, at first they were it like, "Put them off." Yeah. It, it, but then they said, the more they did it, the more they felt it was like hanging out with friends and, mm-hmm. and catching up with friends. Yep. And we just think that's amazing because I hate it when hosts go on and on and on before a topic, and then we. <laughs> I would it. totally fast we forward do through it. it. Every time. <laughs> and here's a whole episode of yeah. us doing that. Yeah. But. Basically. 
you know, so. Yeah, d- uh, spoiler alert, there will be no main topic starts at this time because there's really no main topic today. No, We're gonna we, I got a couple, missing 411 I have like stuff. a couple missing 411 things I got off Reddit that mm-hmm. we didn't have time for in the last episode. But other than that, this is just us spending Christmas Eve with you yep. chatting about the podcast. So, so what are you looking forward to for season five? Um, some sort of normalcy in the world would be nice, yeah, but I'm not nice really, too. I don't know. I, I know I told you Jamie that did our awesome yes. theme music. That's become like, like, it's like almost a Pavlovian response when people hear that beginning dung sound yeah, that they yep. get happy because it's, they know they're listening to the podcast, but he said to save artificial intelligence for when he comes this summer, because Sweet. he's really in our, and artificial intelligence is one of those things that fascinates me and freaks and me out at the same you. time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also, I look forward to getting some of these big episodes that I want to do, like uh, MK Ultra mm-hmm. or We've been life talking or about that near death experiences. One. Yeah, but that's a lot of me being anxious about running out of topics that I keep uh, pushing those off. So those are oh. always in the future as possible topics. I don't. I don't, I don't think Kristen you need just to do gave that. me a look. I know, but I just worry that we're gonna like. I, I love Sofa King podcast. I just do, and you can tell that they they ran out of like mysterious. Hmm paranormal stuff because you know they just did a show on johnny knoxville but it's still it's still (laughs) interesting because i love learning about stuff Mm -hmm. you know so if we do get to a point where we do an episode about like the soda wars like i would kind of like that like we could maybe look into that could be like our patreon Patreon stuff is non-paranormal where we just talk about a topic that we really like yeah you know so i'm looking forward to that i'm looking forward to see what what else we come up with right it'll be a little stressful cause just like getting the mugs going at first was stressful for me just trying to figure out the shipping and the timing of everything and now that i have that worked out and i have a routine and we have our venmo and paypal set up now it's easy so getting patreon set up is going to be a little stressful at I'm first just, I'm just so i don't know what i'm doing I'm so thankful that you took that over because <laughs> stuff like that makes my colon tighten totally like I jim really helped me actually he helped me package all the mugs up and he actually <sighs> bought a cord for the printer today because i can't figure out how I'm not a techie person. Give that guy a hug when we go back up there. Yeah, no kidding. Don't make it weird. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, come on, come in. Come come on, bring it in, man. Bring it in. (laughs) That's great. Um, So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting a Patreon set up, but also an online merch store. I want to set something up where we can just kind of pick, handpick some merchandise we want online, and then people can go to the website and order it, and it'll they'll create it on demand. And then they do the shipping. Yeah. What I'm saying is I don't want to have to work so hard. <laughs> yeah. But but I mean, money's starting to come in, which is cool. Yeah. And hey, man, if sh- if people like these strain sessions masks, yeah. I yeah. bet Sherry would make more of these in different colors. And So between the, page- between the Patreon and your OnlyFans, you get <laughs> tons of money there. <laughs> oh I subscribed, but I canceled it because it was way too explicit. Like, I'm not into some of that stuff. <laughs> oh, my God. So... He's um, kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> He's <laughs> am, totally kidding. One hundred percent kidding. People are frantically googling. Googling. <laughs> Krista Strange Sessions only fans. <laughs> <laughs> not a thing. Definitely um, not a thing. What else are we looking? I'm just looking forward to. I'm looking forward to also s- getting down our here. studio yeah. named like number a, one. Yes. We'll have one for the new, when the new year comes around. Hopefully. You know, you guys have been awesome with the... Throwing out the suggestions, yep. and then we'll get a little sign made. But I want to get bookshelves and better lighting down here, but it's kind of festive. With, I might leave I these really, Christmas lights I like up, actually. Those. I might add more Christmas lights, because yeah. they're pretty... I just want to get rid of that. That's too harsh for me. But I'm pointing at the light in the ceiling, people. Um, and I need it on to read Get a little the... mini fridge down to, here, too, maybe. It'll little, feel like the school. <laughs> a little um, mini fridge. Yeah. A little mini bar. Mm-hmm. Oh, a mini bar, sure. <laughs> no, mini bar. I'm, I'm, we talked about that I drank a lot of beer during the first couple episodes. Yeah. You, well, yeah, like remember, you'd show up at the school and I'd have like a big king can of Coors Light, my yeah. second one, and I'd be like, all, all right, like... let's get this podcast started. Because I was super nervous. Like, it's just <laughs> Your weird. Your drunk uncle. Have you ever seen that on Saturday Night Live? <laughs> drunk uncle. No. Oh, so no. Um, I just, <laughs> I remember, remember that one where we like shared a beer or something and we were both a little loopy. oh my god yeah it was a taste test yeah, right we were both <laughs> was it a pickle beer yeah and we were both a little loopy yeah because i'm a lightweight i'm a I lightweight too ever. so if we ever do a meetup do not buy a shot <laughs> <laughs> i'll be like on a table somewhere dancing <laughs> oh jeez i'm saying i'll be passed out somewhere <laughs> after half a shot i'll be like 
ob- you know, obliterated. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> what else are we looking forward to in the new season? Just more, like, I love, you know, I mean, I get a lot of our old strangers have drifted away. Yeah. I mean, that's just a fact of podcasts. Totally. You know, some people that used to write a lot just don't anymore. People and, you used to communicate with a lot. Yeah, just kind of faded dropped. Faded away. Have faded away, but we always have, get new people coming mm-hmm. and... You know, like I said in that one episode, like the Sofa King podcast guy said, when you listen and you guys send us stuff or make suggestions or something, you guys are a part of this podcast, 100%. whether you're still listening or not. I mean, you're still a part of what made this. So yeah. I just, I love, I love that idea and I'm looking forward to new strangers coming in. Mm-hmm. Me too. Um, and I don't know. I don't know what else. Yeah. I don't. I'm just looking forward to I think we need more it. than that. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking excited. forward to a little break right now, to be honest with you. Yeah. But... You know, it gets to be after Christmas and then we start getting like, I kind of want to record. <laughs> so, so ballpark, are we talking like mid to end of January? Prob- probably March. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will stand for that. No, uh, I'm guessing. Mid to end of January. Mid to end That's of usually January. what we do. Um, yeah, I'm guessing mid to end. You know, it, it gets to that point where we're both like, let's do this. So really after this episode, you'll only have a few weeks to wait yeah, for Yeah, so you episode. guys will be fine. And, oh, that's another thing I was going to say. We're I'm currently like requesting more mugs than we have orders for and i think over the break we'll probably do a couple of little contests with giveaways for mugs so i'd like to do more contests yeah where people like won the amazon gift card or something i want to do because we always say that and we never do it i can even commission a couple masks to give away so i think we have some options for doing that too we'll do a cameo we'll we'll do a cameo thing where you ever see cameo where like celebrities you can pay money and then they, they skype you and have a conversation with you I don't want to do that. <laughs> I saw my girl. I like. You can do that. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, terrifying. Amy Jo Johnson. That was on Felicity. Like she's she's one celebrity that I like. She was the Pink Power Ranger too, and she does that. And it's always like I kind of want to do it, but I kind of don't because I'm like super awkward. What did I say? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I exactly. Don't know. I don't even like doing Skype at work, and these are people I know. <laughs> I know. Um, oh, my nose keeps running. You better catch it. Uh, so yeah i even forgot what we were talking about should we do some missing 411 stuff here yeah these were were already an hour in oh wow (laughs) i know (laughs) um i always think it's bigger than it actually is what's that the episodes a little longer than they actually are oh gotcha you know what i mean (laughs) shut up (laughs) um like i always think this is like this last one i thought this we're not gonna have enough i frantically texted you i'm like come up with some missing four and one stories because i don't have enough and then it's 18 pages (laughs) yeah out of time we're good i just don't i'm not a really good judger of judger (laughs) shut up i have an english degree it's a word (laughs) i knew what you meant i'm not a good judger of like how long (laughs) podcasts are gonna i be. think it's just judge <laughs> Shut up. just say it. It i'll edit that out we've been recording since what 7 <laughs> 30 and it's yeah, 11 11 yeah, we're get- <gasps> oh. it's 11 11 oh my god that is <laughs> <laughs> after you, after i saw my first 11 11 it's not 11 11 it's 10 56 oh, it says on my that's even weirder because it's not act- well my, my laptop computer says, says it's 11, 11 11 so that's weird that is weird i just got all excited <laughs> but it still says 11 11 which is even weirder than it should be because that's not the actual time so we- that the- is an 11 11 okay i'll take it because okay. it's the only one i've ever had um so yeah uh that's these fine. are a couple these are like just two things i grabbed off of reddit about missing four and one that we ran out of time for this first one is one the one that i kind of referenced when i said i th- almost think this is what's going on i don't buy this story because it seems really fantastical the actual story the actual story but you like the theory behind but i like it. the theory behind it okay this was on reddit reddit user just a 33556 posted a thread called quote i believe i was almost snatched here's what happened ooh I just got really dizzy. Oh, really? Like badly, yeah. But I'm, uh, I don't know what that was. Probably the combination of the moxie, the coffee, the candy. So, okay. I'm good. You're okay now? I'm okay now. There's a couch right there if you need to lie down. Uh, my fainting couch. I had <laughs> caught, caught the vapors. I had the vapors. <laughs> you caught the vapors. So he said, uh, quote, I had a very strange experience 12 years ago in Starved Rock State Park, Illinois. It's like four hours, three, four hours away from here. I looked. Okay. It was so bizarre at the time that I never discussed it. I began reading the missing 411 stories a few weeks ago and realized what I encountered fits into the missing 411 profile. 
Additionally, since many of the missing 411 stories border on the unexplainable and bizarre, I feel like what I encountered was not unique, that it was part of some actual phenomenon. Here's my story. I was visiting my girlfriend in Chicago. On a sunny and calm winter day, we decided to go for a hike at Starved Rock State Park, Illinois. I am an avid hiker, and being on leave from Iraq, I wanted to take in some cool fresh air. We hiked the park for several hours. In late afternoon, we started heading back to the car. About one half mile away from the parking lot, we came into an area where the tree branches were broken and pulled towards or over the trail. Most of the branches were broken high up, I'd say eight feet or more off the ground. I'd lived in Washington before going to Iraq, and I knew something of Sasquatch areas. I was going to say, that's a big footprint. So I told the girlfriend it looked like a Squatch area due to the branches broken off high and pulled over the trail. That's about the time things started to get strange. Soon after mentioning this, I felt like someone was staring at me. It's like if you go into a room with a lot of people and someone is focused on you, you get an uneasy feeling and can tell that you're being watched. And that's that's like such a weird phenomenon, mm-hmm. the feeling that you're being looked at. It's just like... I know the feeling, yeah, too. Yeah, it's bizarre. I know exactly it's like, why saying. do you sense that? How, mm-hmm. do you, how do you know that? I think it's a chemical thing. It was like this feeling, but stronger. I started to look around to see who was watching me. It was winter, and the forest was visible hundreds of feet in all directions. There was a group of walkers several hundred feet behind us, and no one in front of us, but I saw no one staring at me. That made me think of The Walking Dead. The walkers? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it was just people walking. It wasn't okay. zombies. Not zombies. Not zombies. <laughs> okay. But there were there were a couple people behind them, like several hundred feet walking the same trail too. Okay. As we passed through the Squatch area, I began to have the feeling someone was behind me following us. Hmm. I looked around and listened, but saw and heard nothing. There was just the people 400 feet or so back on the trail, and they were talking amongst themselves. They weren't even looking our way. The sense of someone being behind me was persistent, so I kept looking behind me. I'd say at least twice a minute. But there was just that group way back there. The feeling of being watched is one thing, but feeling like someone is close behind you is something else. And mm-hmm. that's creepy, too. Yeah. Like the feeling when somebody comes up behind you. Like you, you. expect to see someone yeah. behind you. Yeah. It is more disturbing. I told the girlfriend to go further in front of me and let her go about 20 feet in front because I had this strong sensation of a presence just behind us. So I turn around not more than 30 seconds since the last time I looked back and there is this woman standing there. She was walking but coming up on me fast. There was something off about her speed. She was walking when I spotted her, but her speed was much faster than her gait. It was as if she was on a people mover escalator like in the airport. Yeah. She was coming up fast and was, I'd say, no more than 15 or 20 feet behind me when I saw her. I was rather alarmed and glared at her. She stopped when her eyes met. I gave her a look like, WTF, are you doing coming up on me like that? We stood there staring at each other. Neither of us moved. She had her head cocked back to her left and looked at me from the corner of her eyes in a slightly alarmed, you caught me type of look. She was completely normal looking, like a local Chicago lady, late 50s, wearing a bright red winter coat, gloves, slacks, etc., In hindsight, there are a few other things beside her speed which stand out. The first thing is that there was no sound, no footsteps, no rustling in the woods, nothing to tell me to turn around other than this sense of something behind me, which I had for a little while. At the speed she was moving, she would have had to been running hard, but I heard no footsteps. She was not breathing hard and her mouth was closed. Her gait was like a walking gait. She was not running. However, she was moving towards me at a running speed. I mean fast. When she stopped, I'd say she was less than 20 feet from me. At the speed she was moving in one or two seconds, she would have been on me. The next thing that stands out is her features. She had no distinguishing features. None in her hair, skin, or clothing. No shadowing or skin hues, dimples, etc. As a former army criminal investigator, I know to look for distinctive markings on people and their clothing. There was nothing. I'd estimate her height at about 5'10". Her clothes were of uniform... That's tall. Yeah, her clothes were of uniform coloring and indistinct. It was like she had just stepped out of a department store. Her bright red coat was pristine with a uniform hue to it. There wasn't even shading, which there should have been given the clear sky and low sun. After staring at each other for, I'd say, five to ten seconds, I felt like I got my point across, so I turned around and continued walking. The girlfriend had not noticed anything and had continued walking. I took about three steps and realized there was no way she could have come from that group in the 30 or so seconds since I last looked back. There was also nowhere to come from on either side. Visibility at that point was hundreds of feet all around. I said to myself, no way, and spun back around. She was gone, simply vanished. I checked the group behind us, and no one had a red coat or was even looking at us. There was no one around, and there had been no sounds other than my footfalls. The woman just vanished. From that point, it took us about 10 minutes to reach the car. For the remainder of the walk, I did not feel like I was being stared at or followed. 
I have never been back to Starved Rock State Park, and I have no intentions of going back. The whole thing was bizarre. How was I supposed to tell anyone about that? So I never have. My mental state is fine. I have a high IQ and a 20-year career in a STEM-filled or in a STEM field, that's something in the Army, I believe, hmm. in a STEM field following Army service. At the time, I was working a Department of Defense IT contract in Iraq. I was well-rested and relaxed being on vacation with a girlfriend. There were no drugs or alcohol involved. Those are strictly prohibited in my line of work and are grounds for immediate termination under laws, which I was subject to at the time. I've carried this experience around for 12 years, being unable to talk about it because it is so exceptional and unexplainable. It's a relief to read similar stories of unusual encounters and disappearances. After reading many missing 411 accounts and the profiles of disappearances, I believed I narrowly averted being snatched by whatever that thing was. I do not think it was the woman I saw. I think it was something different, which I could not see. Uh, so, yeah. Like a shapeshifter? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. The creepiest part of that whole encounter is him describing the way that she, like... She's looking at him like, oh, you caught at me. Him it was like a sideways out of yeah, the like corner you, of her like eye. Yeah, like, oh, does he see me? That's, that's what that's creepy. that's what I. But I, what creeps me out is the walking, but moving like you're on that's a people mover in an too. airport. <laughs> you know, so like, what was this? Like, I like I said, I take this with a grain of salt because yes, it's, it's on Reddit. Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> right and you know People it sounds like if, like if it is there. fake it sounds like he throws in like i work for the department of defense and all this stuff to, to give him credibility. credibility but like i said in that last episode like this when i think of what is causing this this is what i think of like something like a cloaking device or something like this like you know like people doing it to, to people but she didn't seem like a person she like, i don't yeah something like, not human no, about that no you know, does like whatever this is, can it like Ooh, manifest that's... itself to look like what? If that is a true experience, <laughs> I'm thoroughly creeped, creeped out by that. I want you and Jim to go for a walk out at a. Uh... So this reminded me of our our impromptu hike we took in the kettles a couple of months ago when it was the sun yeah, was going so down. Yeah, we so creeped out. I, that feeling of something behind you. We didn't see anyone else on the trail, and I was looking behind me every couple of seconds because I was so creeped out. Yeah. It was that feeling yeah. and I, the relief I felt. I mean, it was fun at the same time, but the relief <laughs> yeah. I felt when we got back to our car was palpable. It's like the school when it was freaky. It was fun at the time, but it was still kind of scary. Yeah, totally. You know, like I'm not going down to the bathroom by but myself. There's, I, I had to put this one. I had to do this one because there's something really creepy oh, about this. There are so many things. And like I said, when that. I think about the woman cocking her head and looking at it, like, it's like, that is the creepiest me? part. That, to me, that's like a, does he see me? Right. Look, you know. <sighs> So that I love that story. Whether it's yeah. true or not, I can't say. I know. But in my head, the missing 411 stuff is something like that. Yes. To me, I took that as somebody Maybe that was... Maybe people are encountering something like that. Yeah. And they following something like that. I need to like pay one of my friends to, next time you go for a walk to have her come <laughs> up behind you and like cock her and I'd look like, at you. <laughs> nope. I'm going to nope all over that. So, yeah. That's a creepy one. That wow. A, yeah. This other one is like a, your, your typical missing 411, but I feel like this is something that we need to remember. So I'm going to say, uh, someone asked on Quora, there's a website called Quora yeah. where you can ask questions. Someone asked on Quora if anyone had any real life missing 411 stories and a woman named Marcy Stelling replied saying, quote, the missing 411 in your question caught my eye because I am quite familiar with David Politis and his work regarding missing people. It is mind boggling once you get into it and the whole missing 411 experience has happened in my life. I have written about my brother's mysterious disappearance from Mesa Verde National Park, Colorado, on June 9th, 2013. Honestly, that's all there is to tell. He went on a hike and never returned. A massive search ensued to no avail. No sign of him has ever been found. The only thing to indicate that he was even in that area is that one single ping from his cell phone. It lasted just one second. It was suspected that maybe he had fallen or dropped the phone, causing it to turn on for a brief moment, but no call was ever made. David Politis came onto the scene, and that's again where I respect David Politis. What, whether or not you believe him or not, I respect him. Actually, that going he goes to these places. He He's doesn't. Not an armchair no, he doesn't phone this in. He he yeah. le, he legitimately checks this stuff out. Mm -hmm. Uh, David Politis came onto the scene and went over every detail with a fine-tooth comb, and that is how Mitchell Dale Stelling became a statistic in Mr. Politis' book, The Devil in the Detail The Devil's in the Details. That's one of the missing 411 books. Okay. I have had several experiences when I was in the wilderness alone and got a terrible feeling of doom. It was undescribable, and the first time it happened to me, I was only eleven years old. I was playing in the piney woods behind our house, and suddenly I realized that all sounds of birds and insects had stopped. 
All I could hear was the wind in the trees. I sat quietly confused for a few moments, telling myself everything was okay. But the feeling of fear and doom persisted, and I literally ran out of those woods like I was being chased by a banshee. My brothers teased me, but I never went back into those woods again. As the years passed, my memory of that incident faded until one day many years ago, and in another state, I got that same creepy sensation while I was out in the pasture cutting holly berries to use for Christmas decorations. I was busily clipping away, and then for some reason I noticed how quiet it had gotten. I could only hear a loud buzzing in my ears. That was different than the first time it had happened, but the memory of that long-ago afternoon in the piney woods of Georgia came into my mind. I was standing there, scared out of my wits, and over what? There was no visible threat against me, yet the fear was as real as if there were a pasture full of devils there. But something told me to remain calm, not to walk, not to run out of there. With my heart pounding in my chest, I fast-walked to the edge of the pasture, pulling a wagon full of hollyberry cuttings. Once I reached the edge of that pasture, I still had to go through another one to get home, and in that second pasture, I took off running, dragging the wagon along behind me. I didn't stop until I had passed up my brother's home and it was near my parents' home. The buzzing noise in my ears went away and things were normal at the house. No paralyzing fear, plenty of birds singing, and the chirp of crickets was plain as day. I don't know what scared the tar out of me in those times. I had been in the wilderness alone many times, and only twice did that fear and doom overtake me. And then another time, something similar happened, but it wasn't as fearful as the first two times. I went for a hike on the Petroglyph Trail in Mesa Verde on the one-year anniversary of my brother's disappearance. He disappeared while on this trail, or while on the Spruce Treehouse Trail. I noticed as I hiked alone on the rugged trail, blazed up the mountainside, that it was awfully quiet. I couldn't hear any noise at all except for the wind in the trees. I noticed the absence of any bird song. I walked past a place on the trail that smelled strongly of cat urine, like very strong cat urine. I knew there were all kinds of wild animals in the mountains, wildcats and bears especially. The hair on my neck stood up, and I felt fear creeping in as I stood quietly and looked around at the trees and rocks that surrounded me. A wild cat could easily be hiding, stalking me. I hoofed it up the trail, trailing fear behind me. I made it safely out of the mountains, and once was enough for me. I have no desire to ever go back. Hmm. I refuse to go into the wilderness alone anymore. The third time is the charm, and I had to stop reading missing 411 books because they got to me. Case after case after case of people who have vanished mysteriously, my brother being one of them, just bogged me down after a while. Sure. I hope we find answers to the mystery someday, and I'm determined not to become another statistic. Edit, 9-23-2020. My brother has been found. He was found at the bottom. Uh, this is all written read. He was found at the bottom of a canyon, approximately five miles from where he was last seen. An off-trail hiker discovered the skeletal remains, looked for ID, and found a wallet containing a Texas driver's license and a social security card and a credit card, all in my brother's name. Wow. The coroner said it appeared that he had simply sat down beneath a tree and died. No sign of injury, no broken bones, no head injury. We will never know for sure how he died. His remains were intact, and clothing was still on the bones, even the shoes. He had cigarettes and a lighter with him, as well as his cell phone. At last, we will bring him home to be buried on his property under the big oak tree where he always said he wanted to be buried. The end of his story only brings more questions, but those questions will have to settle down while I grieve the death of my brother. At least she has some closure. She does. She? she, she? Yes, okay. that's a she. I mean, I, I, it do, I think she, it's she, still hard having it's, those but questions. But she said that the questions are even worse now. Right. It's like, what happened? But at least you know he's not still out there No, somewhere. but it said it's like he sat down under right. that tree and just happened to die. Maybe he died with of exposure. His, or... But he had his lighter. He had his phone, you know. Right. So it's just, mm. you know, that's that's one thing that, that people that really love the missing four and one stories need to remember is that every one of those people has somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's they have, waiting for them they to have come a mom home. or a dad or a yep. wife or a son. And I feel like that's one of those things that you kind of forget when you're looking into those cases. That I agree. Each of those people is a story. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I just felt that was a uh, uh, something that people need to remember. That story shows you that, you know, you need to remember this. Yep, I agree. So, yeah, that's what I have. Hmm. Good stuff. Yeah, those were the two that we didn't that have That first for. one really creeped me out, I actually. Have, I figured the first one was kind of <laughs> creepy, and the second one was kind of like, you know, we need to remember that these people are all somebody's relative, somebody's yeah. loved one. Yeah, I agree. That's a good thing to remember. So there's your missing, couple missing 411 stories, but the woman, the woman behind that guy is just creepy. Yeah, I don't like it. No. No, with the red, like the just nondescript red outfit, mm-hmm. like she just walked out of a department store. Right. And then vanished. Yeah. And gave him the cockeyed look. The like, look. Can you see me? The look is what gets me. I so don't there, like it. So there you go. Hmm. Cool. I love it. Couple bonus missing 411s for everyone. So a couple questions. Should we do a questions? Yeah. Let's do it. Hope you guys are okay with this episode. Like I said, we're not... 
This it's is just not, meant to be a fun bonus. Yeah, this is just meant to be like a Christmas bonus. Are we going to do a song? Can we pick a Christmas song since it's the Christmas episode? Sure. I just came up with that, so I don't even have one picked out yet, but I'll I'll think about it. We can maybe do one or two questions, depending on... Should I do a joke? Sure. We'll go to a pickle joke. How can you change a pickle into another vegetable? How? You toss it in the air and it comes down squash. <laughs> That's kind of funny. What do you call bobbing for pickles? What? A barrel of fun. Uh. <laughs> All, right. All right. I already know what I'm going to answer for this question. Okay. I don't know if I told this story on here or not either. I probably, I might have, okay. but it's Christmas. Christmas is the time for stories. Yep. Question by Anonymous. I really believe that people are stranger than paranormal stories at times. What is the strangest, creepiest, oddest thing you have ever seen a real person do? Oh, man. Do you want me to do mine? Yeah, because... I don't remember if I talked about this on here, but it's just like one of those like weird, like just like if what happened that night. So anyway, uh, I am not a party goer, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, my best friend at the time, Erica, was having this big party out at her dad's farm. Uh, I loved her dad's farm. I loved spending time out there. You know, he had a nice big farm out in Michigan with like a big property. So when her dad was gone, she had a huge party there, you know? Uh, people smoking weed and drinking, everybody drinking and stuff. And I was at the party and I was outside, you know, talking and stuff. And at one point I wanted to walk all the way to the back of the farm property and it went way back. So I started walking, walking this trail, going out to the back. And one of her friends, I don't remember his name now off the top of my head, was just standing there on the trail. And he watched me walk by. And I said, you know, I said hi, nodded to him. And then he just watched me walk. He didn't say anything? No. He just watched me walk. That's so creepy. I walked to this woods, this little woods at the back end of the property, got to like the fence line, turned around and came back. And it was kind of a little hike. Uh, but I'm not like a party guy. So I wanted just to get away for a little yeah. bit. So I did that. Walked back and then he wasn't there. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I go back to the party and then these two guys show up, like your typical country redneck <laughs> Like, I didn't like these guys. Mm-hmm. Did not like them. I They rubbed me the wrong way, like really badly. And they didn't even do anything. It was just like one of those you weird things know. where I just did not like it's them. It's the empath in you. Yeah, but I was wrong. So, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So I go back, I hang out and drink for a little bit. And then Heather, her sister and I, I think went to bed. Not together. We were in separate rooms. <laughs> but we went back into the house and, you know, put our pajamas on and stuff because I was spending the night there. And went to sleep or tried to. At some point, I had a pee. So I, I woke up, walked out into the hallway, and in this room bedroom that was right there, there were like three underage girls sitting there on the bed, and they looked at me, and they started like saying something, but I was like, I gotta pee. So I walked, I, I kept going downstairs, walked down the stairs, around the corner into the kitchen, kitchen full of police. And I'm like, uh-oh. I'm like, what? <laughs> in your pajamas? <laughs> yeah, I'm in my pajamas. And uh, Erica was crying. And her boyfriend at the time was talking to the police. So, you know, after the police left, I went back upstairs and talked to those three girls in my pajamas. <laughs> I'm in a room with them and I'm like, what happened? So they told me the whole story and that after I went to bed, you know, they moved out to the barn. Everybody was out in the barn drinking. They had, mm-hmm. the, you know, chairs in a circle. They had the keg of beer out there and they were all drinking. And this guy that her friend, that's kind of not real stable, the one that saw me on the trail walk okay. out to the back. Yeah. He, at some point, he was outside putting strawberries on people's cars, pieces of strawberries on people's cars. Okay. Which he later, so he told somebody it was to keep the demons away. But apparently, he had been out in a field. Somebody saw him in the field screaming at the sky that night, yelling that you can't do this, you can't do this. And he was telling people that the Antichrist was being born that night. So at one point, Erica was out in the barn drinking with everybody and she walked back into the house to get something and her friend was just standing there on the the sidewalk going back to the house. She walked past him and said, hey, when she got past him, he like leapt at her and put his hands around her throat and threw her down to the ground and was choking her, pushing his fingers (gasps) into her, into her neck. That's crazy. Yeah. And he was strangling. He was like strangling her. Yeah. And at that moment, those two guys that I didn't like just happened to walk out of the barn and they saw that and they came over and just pulled him 
and threw him on the ground. And they were like, tr- I, th- I talked to them later and they were like trying to restrain him. And they said his body was just like, sh- like tingling. Like it was just like a current was going through his body. Wow. And that's why the cop, they called, possessed. they called the cops and the cops had took him to jail, but that's what they were talking to everybody. And then I didn't go back to sleep. I went out to the, how do you sleep I went after out, that? I went out to the, the barn and sat in the circle, you know, and drank and talked to them. And those two guys were like really nice. And and we say that if they had not walked out of the barn at that he time, he would have killed her. That it's just wow. that they happened to walk out of the but you know, the people saying that he was out in the field yelling to this guy that you can't do this, you can't do this, and then about putting strawberries on the cards that was to keep the demons away mm. and telling people that the Antichrist was being born in Manitowoc that right. night. So that's one of the strangest things. And, and what freaks me out is that he was out in that, on that trail and watched me walk into the woods back there. If he wanted to do something to me, he could have killed me in that woods and I would not, nobody would have known because it was a distance away from the house. Wow. So that to me is like one of those people are scarier than, cause that was one of her friends and he literally was trying to kill her. Wow. Clearly has mental health yeah, issues. Yeah. Yeah. Which is sad. So yeah, we all sat out in the barn and wow. drank, and we were all like, "Oh my god, did that really happen?" I have nothing that could. So possibly that's top that's that. my story about that. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> you got nothing. No. Anything no. somebody did that was kind of creepy, like. Well, sure. <laughs> sure. I don't know. I'm not gonna be able to come up with anything. Your story was good. <laughs> that's. We'll go with your story. Yeah. I don't know. There's probably something I'm just not thinking of, but. I have a little bit of advantage because I see the question like before we talk about it. So yeah. I, I'm already like figuring out what mm-hmm. I'm going to talk about. And I'm trying to listen to your story and think back yeah. on weird stuff that has happened to me. And I'm sure you haven't there's... had any run-ins where like you're on a trail or something and there's somebody that just is weird or just isn't right. Mm-mm. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I've always been with somebody. I used to go into the woods by myself. I would bring Bogart, my, yeah, Oh, bogey. Yeah, my Bogart. He was a German Shepherd black, black Lab mix, and he was a gentle giant, but he was the kind of dog that people would cross the street to avoid. Well, he was a horse, like coming. size of a horse. Yeah, he was huge. So I felt very safe taking him into the woods by myself. Yeah. yeah. I don't do that anymore. No. I just feel like I know too much now, so I don't yeah. go into the woods by yep. myself. Yeah. Um, only with Jim or other people. No, I don't know. I'm sure I have something that I've buried deep down that's happened to me that was super creepy, but... Nothing that I can think of right now in this moment. Okay, so that's maybe I'll story. share it on the stranger page okay. if, if I come up with something. Yeah, that was, hmm, that's crazy. one of those ones that it's like. That's wild. And and I, I think I even like told the two guys, I'm like, when you guys got here, I didn't know what to make of you. Yeah. And, and they said, it's cool. They said, we get that a lot. They said, we're your typical, <laughs> they're going to cause trouble at a party, redneck, sure. hick kind of guys. Yeah. And they, they show up just, in like a monster truck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and that's that's another one of those things that I remember that mm. I shouldn't prejudge yeah. people because they were actually really cool. That's true. And like I said, if they had not just walked out of the barn at that moment, she could have been killed. Yeah, they saved her life. Yeah. So. That's crazy. Yeah. Hmm. Next question. All right. <laughs> that was a, I'll always remember that night. Maybe um, I should feel lucky I haven't had you probably should. experiences like that. Probably should. Or Next. I block them out. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Next question. That's a good question, though. Mm-hmm. And people are, we say that all the people time. People are scarier that than I'm, anything I'm more paranormal. scared of people than I am of ghosts. Mm-hmm. 100%. People do terrible things. Next l- other question for today, what is a fairly well-known paranormal event, i.e. Skinwalker Ranch, Amityville Horror, etc., that you strongly believe is real, and why do you believe that it's real? Thanks. That's a good question. I'm going to go with Bigfoot. Yeah. I just feel, for me, I feel like it's plausible. I feel like the idea, because I don't believe it's like interdimensional or part alien or whatever. I is feel like well, it's well-known flesh paranormal and paranormal event, though? Would you say... Phenomenon. Bigfoot sightings? Phenomenon. I mean, Skinwalker Ranch isn't an event. Like the, the, it's the, a place. The one, if you had to pick one, say pick one Bigfoot one, because they say a paranormal event. Well, Wait, Skinwalker you should say, Ranch isn't an event, though. It's a phenomenon. Yeah. I don't know what I think of Skinwalker Ranch. But see, I don't. how do you pick one event? I think they mean Okay, so you could say Bigfoot. Yeah. But I the think event, they mean you could phenomenon. say that the creepy one with the calls, like the recorded Bigfoot. The Sierra sounds? Yes, the Sierra sounds. Because, I mean, that's a specific. Yeah, that's a good call. Yeah. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like those sounds have been analyzed, and it's it's just, 
a human would have a really hard time making those sounds and they are chilling. I think they're chilling yeah. to listen to the the weird chatter that yeah. sounds like another language, but it's not another like the language. Japanese chatter? Like, like yeah, yeah. the this sam- samurai so bigfoots crazy. they call it. Yeah. yeah, yep. I definitely like I you know I believe in, I ninety nine point nine percent believe in Bigfoot. Of course, I until I encounter something myself, I have doubts. But yeah. I just feel like too many credible people have encounters. But you know, I just have a hard time. You all. know, I have a hard time with Bigfoot. I, know. I just do. And I get mocked a lot for that because really, a lot of people are like, "Dude, how do you not believe in Bigfoot?" I'm like, "Maybe I need to be more open-minded with that." I don't know. I just find it fascinating. I don't know. As far as mine's not an event either. Mine is a a phenomenon. Yeah, and that is ghosts. Yeah, like I've had enough stuff happen. Totally, especially at Elsing Secondhand Shop. Yep. You know, me too. That's where a lot of my yeah, main experiences where, have happened. That's where something ran its fingers along the back of my hand when there was nobody there. Mm-hmm. That's where we heard the little girl giggle. Giggle. That's and, w- and that specific uh, EVP, I believe, isn't that one where we were? It was just me and you. We were sitting next room. to each other in the book room, and only one of us caught it. I don't think it was on both no, of our recorders. No. And that but is I, a strange, I hear a giggle. Thing. I hear a little girl oh, giggle. Totally. Uh, but it's the, weird that only one of our recorders would pick that up when we were literally sitting yeah. right next to each yeah. other. The, the one thing that stands out for me, and I've talked about this on here, and it's not even like scary, but it's one of those things that this is just a flat out something, is when I was when I slept in a furniture room down in the basement by myself. The tapping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, and I woke up, and everybody was still sleeping because it was like five in the morning or whatever, and I mm-hmm. woke up, and I'm just laying there in the dark, and I just say out loud, is there anybody in here with me right now? And just once something knocked on the end table right, right next to my you. head. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't like a small one. It was somebody knocking. You know, it yeah. was That's that crazy. right next. I'm and it's not it's not going to be a shifting anything because no. it was a, a, and it was just like a flat out response to mm-hmm. my question. We've had like, so many things happen I know, there. and I'm like, okay, something is here. I like mean, when I heard Vicky distinctly say my name. And she didn't. And she didn't. And we have it all on recorder. The breathing, you the can breathing hear in her say ear. my name. The breathing in your yeah, ear. Yeah, the breathing in my ear. The uh, the night that it was just you and I in there when we got so freaked out in that back room of the basement for no reason. Yeah. With the lights on. Yeah. It wasn't even scary. We were in that back room and you're, you and I are both like- We nope. wanted to flee. Yep. Let's, yeah, we wanted to run out of there. Yeah. You know, and I think about- Barry, the time that uh, you weren't there. I think Jason, I think it was people from the other ghost hunting group. I think Noah and Jason maybe, and Barry and I went into that room where like it was the furnace room where there was like a furnace or the something. far back furnace yeah. room, yep. So we walked in there. And the then, door shut And then the you. four of us walked out and as we walked out, the door closed. I was there. The door closed behind yeah. Barry and Barry yeah. was holding her hand like this. So she did not I was close at the it, front of the group. But it was like something closed mm-hmm. the door behind us. So we've had so much stuff we, happen. And there. a lot of it is funny because it happens like the next morning yeah, no, when like, we're not I even about, investigating. I think about the time that I went there with Aaron where, mm. where he Vicky- He got really sick, didn't he? Yeah. But then, yeah, because he was sitting, then he came went up and just sat by the checkout counter in the main room and that's when Vicky took me in the back to show me where a saw blade flew off the wall the mm. week before mm-hmm. and that's when I walked back there and I purposely looked at the cameras to see if I could see anything going on around the building and she showed me and we went back up there is when she asked Aaron did you unplug the the monitors and Aaron said no I've been sitting here reading this magazine and and she pointed and the plug was like somebody had pulled it out of the wall and set it on the table it wasn't it didn't even fall out so weird. they pulled it out and set it there so many strange So Aaron things. was so freaked out about that. Aaron's like, I was sitting right here and I didn't hear anything. Right. And I said, and he, I said, Aaron, that was on. And he said, I know it was on. He said, I looked at it when you and I walked up from the basement. He's like, I'm never coming in here again. <laughs> so he was super freaked out. But but Vicky's place, that, uh, 100%, that, that makes that place me 100% haunted. sure that something, <laughs> yes. whether it's a ghost or whether it's us creating it with our, with our unconscious psychic yeah. powers, I don't know. But there's something going on there mm. you know every time we stayed there we've had something happen yes so that's, the ba- that's, remember by the bathrooms it's like one of the creepiest areas yeah. in the whole building yeah, nobody likes where, going to the bathroom that's where a customer, a customer saw a woman back there folding clothes oh, when there was nobody back there yeah because the customer asked who's the person you have back there folding clothes and vicky's like nobody you know that's so crazy and the, and the boy that saw the little girl asked his dad who the little girl was that mm-hmm. walked into the into wall the of the wall. book room yep. so which yeah. is where we caught the little girl. Yeah, giggling, where we caught the little girl giggling. Which so, Barry feels is not actually a little girl, and I, I no, kind of lean Barry towards that. No, Barry told us too. that. She told us that several times. She said, "You guys," 
She said, I want to warn you guys. You guys think whatever is here is harmless. It's not. Mm -hmm. She said, it could, it could do whatever it wants to you any moment it wants. And I stayed in the building twice by myself. You know, mm -hmm. I slept there by myself. <sighs> yeah. And there's, I'm proud of myself for, yeah, for being down in the furniture room by myself in the building at 11 o'clock at night, sitting in a chair, reading a child's book out loud, trying to get some kind of response. And I'm like yeah. thinking, am I nuts for, am I going to die? I'll never forget <laughs> our first EVP circle there. Yeah. Yeah. That was my first investigation, number one. But it's and... funny because that was, you know, we talked about this long ago on the show, but we were sitting there and we all felt this. We all felt a but room. nobody was saying it. No, we were, but it we was all silent. felt the room got darker. Mm -hmm. Like something came into the room. Something dark came into the room. And it was pitch dark in there. And it was pitch dark and it got darker. And I think I finally was the person who said, is anybody just completely freaked out right now? Because it was so intense. Yeah. And, and Barry all, wasn't there yet. No, and Barry wasn't there yet. So we're all like, this is nuts. Let's stop this. So we mm -hmm. stopped it. And then when Barry got there, we went again to do it. And, and it was nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. And Barry, Barry told me later, yeah. she's like, these guys are nuts or they're <laughs> right. way too invested in this yeah. paranormal stuff. Mm -hmm. So then later again, we tried. And then it was the same as the first time. Barry is like, yeah, you guys are right. There is... Something intense. Like something came in well, the room. Well, we have a theory too that new people to that building. It sh it does. It, it, it shows itself. It shows itself to say like, I can do this to you mm -hmm. if I want to, mm -hmm. you know, but then. As it gets used to you. It's okay. with Then it kind of stops and it's kind of okay with you, you yeah. know, but when you're new there. Yeah. So I, I, I almost kind of forgot about Man, that. I want to go back there. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of forgot about that first EVP because oh, we were all like. I won't forget No, that. because Mark said he kept feeling like somebody was behind him, like putting their, their like hands, not doing yes. it, but like like looking like they were putting that's their right. hands around his throat. Yeah, that's freaky. You know, but it's just funny because Barry was like, these guys are, he's like, she's like, what, what am I getting into? What am I getting into <laughs> with these guys? But then later she's like, no, that was nuts. Mm -hmm. Because her and I actually had to leave you because we got sick. Yep. I her and I that. went out to the front and the, her and I are sitting out on the front steps outside and she's yeah. like that has never happened to me before mm -hmm. like that so, yeah there's something there yeah. so that's that was nuts so yeah good times good times <laughs> <laughs> so good questions <laughs> yeah crazy huh. songs oh christmas song yeah you go first oh man there's so many good ones i think i'm gonna say so from the movie elf th there's tons of versions of this song baby mm -hmm. it's cold outside but my favorite is the version from Elf with Zoe Deschanel and Leon Redbone. They, it's. I've just never like, seen Elf. Oh, what? I'm not. I don't like Will Ferrell. It's, oh, I love Will Ferrell. That I believe that role was actually written for him, and I've said that before that he was made for that role. But I believe they actually did write that role for him. But it is so good. It's so good. I'll may maybe when we start our movie thing, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll have, have to. to watch that. That could be together. Like a, that could it's be a one of our paranormal. No, but like, that could be one of our. Patreon, Patreon things episodes? is us watching that. Oh, it's so funny. It's so funny. My Christmas song is one, I might have even talked about this on the podcast at this point. I don't even remember anymore. But I did not know this song existed until like before last Christmas. I've never heard this before. And somebody had it in like a YouTube video. And I'm like, who does this song? It is a song. The singer is Chris, Chris Ray. Okay. And the song is called Driving Home for Christmas. Of course, and, it's a song I've never heard and of. And I just really like this song. <laughs> it's, it sounds like a Christmas song. I'll play okay. it for you after after we shut off the podcast. Okay. But uh, it's a Christmas song, and it's uh, it's on my flash drive in my car. And this, I have my own little Christmas playlist. Mm, me too. You know. Uh, Mine's all Perry Como and like. <laughs> yeah. Like mine is, mine is Crosby. like Peanuts stuff. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, Goo Goo Dolls just came out with a Christmas CD. Really? Yeah. I'm not a Goo Goo Dolls Trivia fan. question. Do you know what Goo Goo Dolls original band name was? Because mm -mm. I really don't get into them at all. <laughs> so Do you want to no. know, know what their original? Sure. Is it better than Goo Goo Dolls? No. Sex Maggot. Ugh. <laughs> that was their original name. Well, glad they went with Goo Goo Dolls. Yeah. So Aaron sent me a picture of the CD Sex and I'm like, maggot. yeah, I love Sex Maggot for Christmas. <laughs> you know, but That's yeah, great. they just came out with one. Uh, Chicago, like I love the band Chicago hmm. and they have a... Uh, not like I don't like like eighty Chicago. I like seventy Chicago, mm. but they can and they came out with a Christmas one, so it's a lot of like stuff like that. Okay. So I have my own little Christmas playlist. See, but, I like classic Christmas music. I don't like new stuff. But it's, it's weird. Got to be like this, rocking around the Christmas tree. This by driving Brenda home Lee. for Christmas song sounds like a classic Christmas song, mm. and, I, and it's 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 just good. So okay. I'll post it in the group. Yeah, sweet. 
and I think that's it. I think so. I, I did hope, jokes. I hope you guys liked. It's an hour and a half, so it's not okay. like this is a short episode. Yeah, so at I all. hope you guys liked just hanging out with us, mm-hmm. reminiscing about creepy stuff, and doing some missing four one one. Doing some missing four one one, and we could probably have a gifts. whole episode just talking about investigations. Oh, I'm sure we could. I think we I did. love reminiscing about yeah, it. So do I. So it makes me miss it, but then I also totally. realize I'm I'm in bed at like seven o'clock at night, so I can't really <laughs> do it anymore. <laughs> That's so funny. I'd stay up late for an investigation that was local. I would Just try. Saying. I would try, but can't make any promises. <laughs> so I think that is it. Yeah. So, so from our still unnamed basement studio. Mm-hmm. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. <laughs> uh, from Krista and I, we both wish you a very Merry Christmas. Happy and a Happy holidays. New Year. Happy New Year. We will see you guys after the holidays. And until then... Stay strange. strange.